starts right at the horse farm. It starts at the horse farm. Kevin, don't make it. I'll take this. Oh, I see. Yes. I haven't. No, I haven't. I talked with him last night. Please rise and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have roll call? Councillor Hartmanna. Here. Councillor Conley. Councilor Lasley, here. Councilor Sprague, here. Supervisor Lasley, here. Okay. Under announcements, okay, August 20th, 27th, there's a schooling for the election inspectors, and that's going to be held right here. And on August 28th, the, the country dancing will be here again. Go right into committee reports, the assessor. Well, um, the manufacturing portion or the class uh, class making uh, facility uh, has really been uh, has been dismantled, but the um, warehousing portion remains active. Uh, the AH chapter uh, 486 petition uh, that was filed uh, will be going before Judge Elliott uh, August 14th. Um, if you remember that one is where we disagree with the fact that, uh, that it is uh, taxable and uh, they feel it uh, uh, should be wholly exempt. And uh, that will be decided by Judge Elliott uh, uh, probably next week, hopefully. With, uh, Work goes in the, in the town's favor uh, as not being uh, an exempt property. As they are, they're going as it's an educational, but uh, we feel it's not educational. Their uh, basic uh, charter does not indicate a, a uh, educational basis for it. It has no, uh, uh, it's not written in a sense. It doesn't have anything the regents, regency. Uh, um, Board of Regents doesn't recognize it. It doesn't have a uh, uh, overall uh, uh, curriculum uh, of any kind. Okay, building inspector. Activity report for July 2002. Uh, single family residences, we issued three permits for a total of $622. Manufactured homes, we issued three permits, a total of $400. Accessory buildings, we issued four permits for $181. Swimming pools, we issued four permits for a total of $145. Decks, one permit, $20. Additions, six issued for $616, as a total of $1,984. <coughs> Inspection-wise, building code, we had 33. Zoning, uh, five days, total of 38. Violation notices issued were four. Uh, certificates of occupancy, one issued, and certificates of compliance, two issued. Uh, town looks a bit better. We started violating last month, and uh, we violate more this month on the cars and junk and from the letter we sent out back in May. Uh, most of the people that we violated pretty much are taking care of their issues, so that's going well. The ones that don't, we will eventually bring to court if they don't take care of their issues in the time allotted. So it's looking pretty good, and we're going to go after the ones that aren't looking so good. That's it.
Maybe we could change the wording on that violated. <laughs> dog control? I have dog control. Okay. Dog control for the month of July. 85 calls received. 10 dogs housed at the kennel this month. Six dogs at the kennel this meeting. One dog adopted. Two dogs redeemed. Eight dogs euthanized. Seven dogs reported lost. No dog bites. 500 total miles traveled this month. No repairs at the kennel completed. And he put on the bottom that um, cages need to be fixed and the sink still needs to be fixed. And it's made up by Edward Smith. Okay, highway. Expenses for July 2002. Supplies and maintenance, $23,337.14. Payroll, $18,235, for a total of $41,572.14. Payroll hours as follows, 412 hours machinery repair, 76 hours on hauling, 20 hours on paving, 50 hours on tree work, 580 hours on drainage and culvert work, 112 hours on mowing, for a total of 1,250 hours. For the month of July, we used 253 gallons of gas, 1,164 gallons of diesel fuel. Historian? <clears throat> this past month has been spent mostly on helping various families to complete their genealogy. Also, I'm working with some very good assistants on the first reunion of Harvard District No. 5 School near Mount Pleasant. This is scheduled for September the 14th at the Mount Pleasant Church Community Room at uh, 12 noon. Thank you. <coughs> Recreation. Okay. Our past events were on July 31st. We went to the zoo. We had about 33 people show up, and it was a very, very hot day. If I could have switched the zoo and Thunder Island, it would have been perfect. Um, I started planning for the fall events. And on July 23rd, I met with Brian Chetney from the Oswego County Youth Bureau because he has to do a yearly evaluation, and everything went fine. Lanny? Uh, Chairman Kyle couldn't make it tonight, so I'm going to fill in. Uh, the planning board held its monthly meeting uh, last night, and all board members were in attendance. We had three topics of discussion. Uh, there was a public hearing for Ray Benoski for uh, a use permit for mining on Taplin Road, and uh, the motion was passed. As long as New York State passes the rest of their paperwork for them, uh, we've given them the go to go ahead also. Secondly, there is a single split application by diversified developers at 683 County Route 6 in Phoenix. Uh, the motion was passed to have that single split. The property is about two properties into the town on County Route 6. And uh, there's, a, there's a single wide home there now. They have about 400 foot of frontage and they're splitting it into two lots. Uh, last, uh, the planning board was requested by the town board to consider and approve a change in zoning designation for the following two parcels of property on Pierce Drive. The first one being map number 253.08-02-04, being a 7.28 acres and the second one being map number 253.08-02-05. This changes from industrial to convenience business. Uh, there is a B2 on one side of this property now, or there, I'm sorry, there is an R2, which is residential two for multifamily residential, and it went right into industrial. Uh, we have had people looking at this, these properties that don't fall into industrial. We thought it would be a good buffer zone to make a stepping stone for these properties. And uh, again, Planning Board uh, does recommend this change and we're requesting it of the town board. And that's our uh, meeting. Zoning. Okay, old business? Anyone? No business. Petitions. We do have them. <laughs> the 
it's a petition asking also for that zone change. All right, that's um, that's the one that the planning board used last night. That's okay. what was presented to the planning board. Okay, we'll go into our resolutions. Resolution 2002-86, approval of minutes. Move to approve the regular meeting. Move to approve the regular meeting minutes of July 11, 2002, having been previously distributed to the board for their review and dispense with the reading of the minutes. I'll move it. I'll second it. Dr. Hartman. Yes. Dr. Conley. Yes. Dr. Lockwood. Yes. Dr. Craig. Yes. Supervisor Lockwood. Yes. Resolution 2002-87, payment of vouchers. Move to authorize supervisor to instruct bookkeeper to pay the following vouchers from the appropriate accounts. Voucher number 204-231, general fund in the amount of $18,613.10. Voucher number 156-182, highway fund in the amount of $23,337.14. Voucher number three, Swigo Healthcare in the amount of $60.14. Voucher number nine, Sewer in the amount of sixty-two dollars and seven cents. I'll move it. I'll second that. Councilor Hartman. Yes. Councilor Conley. I'll have to abstain. I didn't get a chance to review these vouchers. Okay. Councilor Lockwood. Yes. Councilor Sprague. Yes. Councilor Lockwood. Yes. Resolution 2002-88, authorize town clerk to advertise for an opening on assessment board of review. Move to authorize the town clerk to advertise for an, appoint, an opening on the assessment board of review for a five-year term starting 10-1-2002 to 9-30-2007. I'll move it. I'll second it. Councilor Hartman. Yes. Councilor Conley. Yes. Councilor Lockwood. Yes. Councilor Sprague? Yes. Supervisor Lockwood? Yes. Okay. Resolution 2002-89, Dog Ordinance. Move to authorize the town clerk to advertise for a public hearing to update the changes in the Dog Ordinance. I uh, move it. I'll second it. Councilor Hartman? Yes. Councilor Conley? Yes. Councilor Lockwood? Yes. 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 Resolution 2002-90, transfer of funds. Move to authorize the supervisor to instruct the bookkeeper to transfer the following funds from capital machinery saving to DA 5130.2 in the amount of $26,058. I'll second it. Comfort Heart Rena. Yes. Comfort Conley. Yes. Comfort Lockwood. Yes. Comfort Sprague. Yes. Supervisor Lockwood. <coughs> yes. Resolution number 2002-91, liquor license for the BPOE 830. Move to authorize the Fulton BPOE 830, Fulton Elks, to remove the existing license from the city of Fulton and to operate and sell liquor for retail consumption on the premises, 57 Pierce Drive, as required by ABC law number 642A. I'll move it. I'll second it. Councilor Hartman. Yes. Councilor Conley. Yes. Councilor Lockwood. Yes. Councilor Sprague. Yes. Supervisor Lockwood. Yes. Resolution 2002-92 zone change. Move to authorize the town clerk to advertise for a public hearing for a zone change on Pierce Drive. I'll move it. Second it. Comfort Hartman? Yes. Comfort Conley? Yes. Comfort Lockwood? Yes. Comfort Sprague? Yes. Supervisor Lockwood? Yes. Public comments? You want to start now? If you want to. <laughs> okay. First of all, let's start with the dog uh, ordinance that you uh, just voted on. What changes do you uh, are what changes are you anticipating? Well, we're basically updating it because the one has been in there since the beginning of time. <laughs> uh, we're getting nowhere as far as problems with dogs and okay. people not licensing them because uh, right now the best the, the judge can <laughs> find anybody for a dog 
is, the, is it like what, 10 bucks? And uh, that's being changed. Uh, we haven't really had the, uh, the time to review this. So this will be done at the public hearing. Um, okay, secondly, uh, the eight dogs that they euthanized, what was wrong with them? <coughs> can you answer that? Nobody laughed them. We can only keep them so long. One of them I know had been hit by a car and had a broken leg. And, I mean, a lot of these dogs that, that come in here to get them put away are, are, have been injured. Dogs that we pick up that are injured. But then there's some of them that just nobody wants. I mean, you walk next to a kennel down there and the thing lunges right at you through the cages. You ain't going to dot that dog out, you know. But we do keep them the 10 days, and that's three days longer than we have to. That's a lot of and he goes through a couple of adoption agencies to try, he really does try to find a home for them. He does? Euthanasia is the last option that you know, we're just not keeping them for. Well, the reason why you asked, I mean, there's, there's got to be somebody in the town, something like me. I'll steal a dog before I put him to sleep. And that's what I've done. Were you the guy that broke in on it? No. <laughs> are you admitting I didn't steal any of looking dogs. for it. No, I stole, I stole, the other, stole a couple other dogs because they were being ill-treated, okay? I'll say it. I don't care. If they want to arrest me, they'll let them arrest me. Uh, thirdly, going up and down Kingdom Road, County Route 53, you name it, Broadway Road, call it whatever you want. Uh, the engineers or the surveyors are now marking out the, uh, for the water line from Scriba. That's the one that we were talking about, the supply, mm -hmm. Kingdom Road. Okay, what is the results as of today that you guys have heard? I haven't heard nothing today, but uh, we have an engi the engineering report is done. We just haven't received it back yet. We got notification that it was, it's been completed. Okay, because I was hoping that the engineer would be here tonight to find out what their time frame was on starting to mark out our area. I mean, they've already got that area marked out. But I don't even think they're going to start that this year. I don't know. It seems like they're running ahead of schedule then. Way ahead. Way ahead is right. So, um, CMS engineers and ask for Mr. Pinto. He'll, he's the one that did all the engineering study. He'll probably give you all the information you want. Well, how do you get a hold of them? CNS engineers. I can give you a phone number. Okay. Because right now, uh, I'm not the only one on my road. This is my fourth. <laughs> <laughs> this is my fourth load of water already, and that's not including what the other people have gotten. And I think we're going to have a tough time this year. I think. I know. And I'm looking to start pushing somebody to see if we can't get that thing going. It takes time to get a water district one. A long time. Well, I don't think there was any anticipation of having water there this year. Oh, I know the that. Anticipation is next year, next summer. I'm looking towards October next year, 2003. That's what I'm looking at. And I'm hoping that that's pretty much on on schedule or whatever you want to call it. Because the neighbors are really, you know, I mean, the whole town of Bonley is hurting anyway. But since Bonley, or since Scribe is already marking their areas out, and they've got the map on where the lines are coming from and going to, I was just wondering where our map is if we got one. Supposedly we have a report, a study done on it. That's what it I mean, they, they've had their maps drawn out for this project for years. We've seen them when we were down there this spring. They have maps drawn out for the entire town of Scriba. And all they do is just update that map and go on with the next project. Okay, then the last question I got is for our uh, illustrious leader here, uh, Building Inspector Code Enforcement. Next to the Pools Club, the trailer that sits there. <clears throat> okay, is that legally set in there? 
Thanks to the Bulls Club? I'm not familiar with the trailer. Okay. <coughs> well, if that's a R1 zone, then uh, what's the trailer doing in there? Uh, How long has it been there? I don't know. There are many trailers in R1 zones. If they've been there for a number of years. They were grandfathered in. I, I, I understand that. but And you can also update just by coming going through planning, they can update to put another trailer in if they have a trailer and improving it. Uh, nothing's come through. These are very different Oh, there is that, oh, you're talking across the street. Yeah. There's been a violation issued to them, and they've been in touch with us. They're supposed to come in to go over it, and they haven't done that yet. They, uh, the owner of the property did call me today to leave a message saying he was trying to get a hold of me. What about the garbage on that, in that area? On that particular trailer? Yeah. I haven't been down into the property. I just, when I violated it, I saw it from the road, and we violated it. That. Okay, then this is, I, I, I gotta go, I gotta do it, but uh, these houses that are abandoned or up for sale or whatever, and their grasses are hay, whatever, up to three foot, four foot high. Is there any way that I'm, I'm gonna put this weight to get into that property, cut the grass down? and assess the property for the time that was current law i no. as of january 1st there is a new maintenance law coming out with the new uniform building code that if the grass gets over 10 inches high and the people are notified and don't take care of it then at that point we will be able to uh, because we haven't been through the training i haven't been through the training yet we're waiting to january which is the time we have to implement that code so we're still currently operating under the old code, short of the insulation values that we have to use the new code now. So next year, yes, that would be an option. It currently it is not. I think you got two issues there. You've got houses that are occupied that have so, grass right. situations, and that's what I think that law would apply to. <clears throat> but if you're talking abandoned houses where people basically abandoned the houses and turned them back over to the banks, um, unless they are sold, I don't know how the town would be able to cover the cost of uh, maintaining them in the meantime, because the people are basically, which we do have a lot of those, you're right, I see them, you know, they're abandoned and they're basically returned to the banks, and the bank's going to look to try to get rid of them. We, we can't attach those costs to the tax rolls per that new code once we implement it. Again, we won't be doing that until January 1. But then again, if, the, if it's abandoned, who's paying the taxes? Well, right now, right now, and we got a few of those in the town. You're right. Yeah, I know. There's, there's three of them in my area. Okay, on the Kingdom Road area, there's three of them right now. And the grass is knee high to an elephant. Are they abandoned or for sale? Pardon me? Are they abandoned or for sale? They're abandoned. They're, they're, they're for sale, but no. nobody's living on them. If the bank takes it over bad. and they give it to a realtor, it's up to the realtor to keep it looking. Sold. Decent enough to be sold. I'd call a realtor 40 times I'd over. Say it would be up to the realtor. I'd call them you know, time and time again. And they don't want to know nothing. They don't want to sell it very good. So there, that's why I'm bringing it up now. If we could do something and then assess the property. If we had na if I had an actual name of who it was, I'd be glad to write them a letter and ask them to at least go in and cut the but well, maybe Tom, I can give you where it is and you can yeah, find out who the realtor is. Or if you need exact location, then I, you know, I can yeah. try to look it up and find out who it is. But, yeah. Okay. I mean, we, we feel it's an issue also if it's too long and it's near, especially if it's near a property where somebody is living. If it's just in a stretch of land where nobody is, it's really not a, a real concern of ours. Well, the one right next door to me, I've asked them, to, I've called them up in Liverpool. I mean, I'm getting snakes and if I, if I start getting rats, watch it. Because... I won't do it, but uh, they're, you know, they're coming on the prowl right straight through that property right now. If it did get rats, there is, then we, there is a procedure we could take. So in that case, you'd call me and we can, actually, we can, we can act on that. Okay, you're not concerned. driving them all out, are you? <laughs> I'll start pulling out the revolver, I'll tell you. I'm not wasting no time. Fresh meat for supper, right? Anyone else under public comment? <laughs> Okay, let's go to our future meetings here.
August 14th will be the next zoning, and that'll be at 7 p.m. September 4th is the next planning, and that's at 7 p.m. September 10th will be our next bill signing agenda, and that's at 6.30 p.m. September 11th is the next, will be the zoning meeting for September again, I guess. And September 12th will be our next town board meeting. Dennis, will the public hearing for the uh, zone change be held on September 12th? Yeah. Yes. In fact, there will be two public hearings on that night. What's the uh, other one? The zone change on the dog ordinance. I wonder if one thing we need to do, we may have to check if we have to submit um, this zone change request for 239 review. Do you know if we have to or not? I think I we might. So. Not within 500 foot of a county road. And 239 requires if it's within 500 foot of a county road. Okay, Make a motion, we adjourn. I'll second it. Yes. 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 Yes.